All right, what's up, y'all? It's like a fan here. As you can see by the time of today's video, we got things nobody wants you to know on defense in NBA 2K22 Next Gen. By far, my most popular video every single year, all the way since 2K17. People have absolutely loved this. We've been dropping major tips and gems on everybody from year to year, and this year we're approaching the different way. So. In this one right here, we are talking about how to stop the left-right cheese. I want to explain to you guys defensive settings and stuff that you can do as well. On-ball defense, corner defense, hedge defense on the backside, defensive settings that you can change, badge levels and loadouts that you want to use. So I hope you all enjoy. Also, in this video, I'm going to try and explain things in a very fast way because I do want this video to be really condensed and really just action-packed, explaining to you guys really important things in very small increments. So. I first and foremost want to talk about on ball defense, hedge defense, corner defense, all tied together, how this all comes together. So first and foremost, if you are the on ball defender, I want you playing the middle. I want the hedge guy playing the wing side over here to this open wing. What it's going to allow you to do, and this is where I want to explain, it's a lot more complicated than you would think, where yes, maybe you think this open area is hard for me to guard. But the other thing too, though, is that it makes it so the big man, if he ever pops or rolls, is near that corner defender right there. And if he rolls, it's going to be a really lurky lane right there where this guy can drop down and play two. He could play two guys really easy, paint and corner, and be in the lane for either of them. If he pops out to this wing right here, the corner can also step up from that corner. He does give up a back door while doing so, because obviously if J20 right here in the corner takes a step to that wing, if this guy pops to this open side, he is going to get that easy back door but in that situation AK might be able to get to the point guard already and then I could drop back for that back door easy so the reason I want to explain why I'm playing this wing side like I said is because if we reverse that and if this point guard were to run to this right side right here and I have to hedge out right here what this ends up doing is if my point guard is chasing really hard and has to chase to that right wing then this big man could completely just pop out to this completely wide open side and we have nobody to help over there. Obviously this corner player, he would have no impact at all in terms of the defense and being an extra body. He's literally just one guy guarding one guy. Again, I just want to explain if I'm playing that hedge defense toward this wing side right here, it's impossible to deal with a popping big man, which you are going to run into probably 90% of the time you're playing 3v3 on the park in 2k22 next gen. Almost everybody has a shooting build if we're being completely honest and especially it's really hard to deal with the randoms too. Now I do want to give you guys a little bit of insight on how to play defense if you are playing with randoms because I will say I do know that a vast majority of you guys don't have the luxury of playing with teammates. So. I will explain to you how I would prefer for you to play on ball defense or for you to play Hess defense if you are playing with the randoms. But really quickly, I did just want to talk about how to play together as a squad, how you and your squad can take this information right here and implement it straight into your game on how you like to play defense. And again, it's all three people involved. If you're setting up this defense right here, this big man popping out to that wing, this corner is going to be able to play two, fly up from that corner to the paint. Your point guard or lockdown, whoever the player may be, can play this chase defense where he follows the guard and you don't have to full switch. And the reason I want to do that is a full switch of me as the big man onto the guard is going to be a really tough thing. Obviously, it's hard for me to keep up with that PG in the wide open space. If this dude is a popper and he just stays on this left wing right here, then I'm stuck with this point guard on the whole left corner to top of the key. I got to guard him on the, uh, pretty much half the entire court. Now, one adjustment I want you to make as an on-ball defender is not to over chase because you're going to see in a situation like this where, again, then AK ends up on the wrong side of the court right here. I do have to step up full to this point guard. So when you over chase and you end up on the wrong side of the court based on where we're trying to play hedge defense, it ends up being really bad for you. And again, I have to step up full to this point guard. I get completely stunned and he's way too fast for me to deal with. And then as you can see in that exact same situation, again, because this big man is rolling from this wing rather than from the middle, it's going to be really hard for for J20 right here in the corner to have any impact in the passing lane. And now we're stuck with a full switch right here where our point guard is on the big man and I'm on the guard and I'm nowhere near close enough. Now, if that did miss, you could see that's going to be an easy offensive rebound again, because why we gave up that easy switch right there where AK didn't take away his middle and wasn't letting me play hedge defense toward that left wing. And again, in that situation where the point guard goes middle and the big man has to step up, it's going to be really, really bad situations like this all day and again you can see this big man is really having a free rebound and a kick out to the corner why we have two small guys right there he is easily grabbing that board and just throwing it to the corner free three points if this one happened to miss so now let's talk about two things simultaneously i'm going to talk about how you can play together as a squad and how you can play together as a random if you are someone who's having to be stuck in that corner defense and trying to help your teammates so 
you're going to see my boy J20 gets kind of beat right there to the top. Now, this is where you as an individual player can make this difference for your team, even if there's no communication aspect to it at all. In that situation where if this point guard gets beat to that open wing, you as that corner defender can make a huge impact in stepping up and contesting this right here and baiting. A lot of these point guards out here in the park, they are horrible passers. They have never even touched the pro-am area ever, and they don't know how to make this pass right here. And even if they do, you are going to be in a range where you can get the easy ghost contest right there. Again, you can see AK didn't play hands up defense at all, just stood in his face. And the reason he's doing that is because he knows he has to return to that corner. So if he did jump or play hands up defense right there it would have been impossible to get back to that corner so again just taking a step from the corner to the ball handler if you're in that area in vicinity and then it's easy to get those types of contests right there 48 percent contest now I do end up not getting the rebound, and now we're gonna talk about how to play the on-ball defense if you're playing with randoms. So you're gonna see J20 doesn't like to play a lot of team defense, and that's not a problem. I know a lot of lockdowns out there who are good at defense kind of like to play more on their own and not really by the same system that I'm talking about. So J20 doesn't exactly want to play the same way that I'm talking about with AK, where he's taking away the middle, and I'm playing this hedge defense over here toward this corner side, away from where this corner is. I like to play this right side of the screen. I want him in the middle of the court, but right here, you're gonna see he just wants to play true front back defense and in that situation he is playing this offhand every single time as you saw the point guard had the ball in his left hand boom pg goes to the right j20 is right there for the bump steal he doesn't get it but you're gonna see boom he just comes right back does the exact same thing he's playing that middle boom he's playing that offhand a lot of these guards they don't know how to move if you're taking away that offhand and i just want to run that back just to show you guys what i'm talking about so again you can see this pg he's going to the left wants to go right but here's the thing they don't do that <laughs> they don't ever do that all right so with this one specifically though i am a little bit hypocritical because what j20 actually does is he takes away the ball hand side so you can see where the point guard was running to he's trying to cut off now this guy right here I'm, I'm gonna be real with you he was actually a pretty good player we're gonna rewind all the way to the point of the intros and you can see this is earlier in the season and he is still a level 36 and it has a 97 overall these guys win percent were still in the 70s as well 77 you can see mine's obviously 91 but either way long story short what i want to explain to you guys is you can pick up on the point guard's tendencies quite a bit you can see this dribble move that he does right here some of these people <laughs> i'm not gonna lie obviously him going right right here would be the right move to do and most people probably will but if you're playing this guard's tendencies and you see that he likes to do this little style right here you can play for those bump steals and once again this is the aspect of defense that i'm talking about this is why i say you can be very comfortable playing for these bump steals toward the middle why because again, me as the big man, I'm hedging toward that wing. I'm here for the help D on the guard if he comes to this right corner right here and I step up and then I get back on defense for the roll or anything like that. And if he does the pop, I'm relying on AK to help out a little bit with the pop and just send me a second person to deal with that. But either way, again, he's playing that middle. He can easily play for that bump steal right there, gets it, gets the steal, just like that. That's a huge impact on the game right there. You guys know the deal. It's very hard to stop these guards and you can say, yes, you're running the same exact thing on the other end. Well, here's the thing. I know a lot of people like to think this left, right cheese, quote unquote, it's no skill. It's, you know, anything to do with running a play shot in a big takes quote unquote, no skill. Well, why are they not defending it the same way? You can see this is horrible defense by this dude right here. Absolute garbage defense from this big man right here. If this is me on the exact same thing I'm talking about, this guard is taking away the middle, just like our guard was. Now, intentionally, probably not. But either way, this big man right here is in no way ready to step up wide open corner three. This is him being a horrible player. That's me being a good player. Now, in this little clip right here, it's breaking down corner defense and hedge defense together at the same time. So once again, if you're playing with like a J20, right, where he's not playing by my system, quote unquote, of defense where he's taking away that middle. And this is going to be the exact same thing in terms of the no communication aspect, right? It's you playing with randoms. Maybe this guy is still playing the exact same level of defense right here where he's trying to play on ball D, but then he gets beat. So I'm hedging toward this top right here. Now this dude ends up popping or slipping. Either way, I'm going for him and letting my guard get back. You can see he easily makes it back because of the hedge defense that I played, and this guy didn't really do it quick enough. Now, in this situation, we're talking corner defense. ISO, J20 plays for that reach in. I'm stepping off that corner. I'm fronting the corner. If he passes it there, I can jump contest and easily still get back for that three pointer right there. And then right here, you can see he tries to get him beat again to that right corner. I'm still there even if he weren't able to be able to get that contest. And again, what my what my whole concept is that I'm talking about of you either playing with randoms or with the squad is fronting the corner is a very good thing to do for a lot of these dudes who come out here and try and ISO and they just have role players in the corner who sit there and do absolutely nothing. No cuts, no nothing like that. And even if they do, 
it's still a two-point shot at the end of the day if your guard is still pretty good he's getting up those three-pointers or you just have good spacing on your team and you're getting threes pretty naturally then you can easily do stuff like this where you front the corner and then if they try and pass it right here to this three-pointer i'm still getting back super easy contesting that right here i'm still here for that contest even though j20 was as well and i can still get back for the rebound albeit as well all right, so just with those few clips right there, you guys can see we talked about hedge defense, on-ball defense, and corner defense all tied in together, whether you're playing with randoms or with the squad. We talked about different styles you could play of on-ball defense if you're playing without a squad, and then how you can play, regardless of if you're playing with a teammate that you know, how you can play hedge defense or corner defense, be able to front those corners, step up, and send a lot of help to your guards, and then give up those free corner cuts. But you can still play for those chase down blocks if you have good solid block rating, and if you have really good rebounding too, it doesn't matter if he gets that free release on you, you can still get down there for that. So anyway, now we're going to talk about controller settings. This is what I have currently for all of my builds and how I feel you should have for any build that you have as well. So with defensive assist strength, I have always been an advocate of this in the past. I love to have this on, let's say in 2K20, I had it around 30 throughout the whole year or something like that. On 2K21 current gen, I wanted higher assist defense because I felt like I was sliding like crazy. In this game, I don't feel like the slides are ridiculous. I feel like the stuns are ridiculous. Long story short, this is my view on defensive assist strength this year. I feel like if you have it up at all, or the further you go, the worse it gets in this aspect of if you're trying to keep up with this left, right cheese stuff, right? You got to actually be good on the sticks. You have to be able to predict where they're trying to go. And if you can't predict where they're trying to go, you definitely don't want the game holding you up from going there. Because if you are getting beat to that left, and you're holding LT. Yes, albeit you should probably let go of LT when you're trying to actually catch up to somebody who's sprinting. But honestly, in these situations where you're trying to keep up with the left right cheese, you do not want the game assisting you in any aspect or stopping you from doing what you're supposed to be doing in any way. And I feel like defensive assist strength does that. Now, in previous years, I did feel like it was pretty helpful. It stopped the sliding a little bit. It helped you in some situations just kind of stay in front of people if they're doing size ups. But me personally, I don't like this at all in this game, so I keep it on zero. This one I'm keeping that for good, to be honest with you. To be really quick with box out assist strength, because I feel like rebounding still does kind of tie into defense in some aspect, for the bigs especially out there. The reason I like to have this low is if you're down low with two people, one might be a lockdown or a guard, and then the other is going to be the big man. I always, always, always want to be boxing out that big man because the guard plays no aspect or any impact on getting that rebound. When you're boxing out that big man, that's what you want to do. And with the higher box out assist strength, the less control you have over which of those two people you box out. Now, me personally, I feel like that's all this really matters for. I think box out assist strength only really matters in terms of like double team rebounds, which one you're trying to box out. I don't think it really matters that much in terms of securing more box outs on one on one situations. I don't think this is really that big of a deal. So next up, we are going to talk about badges. But first and foremost, I want to talk about specific heights for lockdown builds in 2K22 next gen. So a lot of people out there on YouTube that advocate for smaller lockdown builds to negate mismatch expert, where mismatch expert, obviously the taller you are as a defender, the less contest you quote unquote get. I don't believe in that for a second. I feel like being a small defender doesn't actually equal good in terms of getting shot contest. And the taller you are, the actually better the contest is, especially on the jump contest. Now, I personally have that theory and have that opinion. Some other people might believe that the smaller you are, the easier it is to contest people. But I've seen it firsthand. You can literally get shot over. You don't get very good impact on jump shot contest when you're doing things on the perimeter with those five nine five seven builds six foot five in my opinion is the perfect perimeter lockdown height in the game now the reason for that you can obviously see this build exceeds crazy attribute ratings and everything defensively 99 on perimeter d steel 93 speed 91 acceleration 99 vertical as well people sleep on vertical what it does for defense in this game with the jump contest how you can affect rebounding and shot blocking chase down blocks with this as well it list goes on and on i think a lot of people sleep on vertical and again this build exceeds crazy rating caps in terms of everything and to be six foot five and still have 93 speed is crazy as you're going to see if i go down on this list and minimize the weight as far as it can go for a six foot guard i still only have 96 speed and as you can see for the smaller guards you actually have to up the weight to get perimeter defense as well so in my opinion i feel like the best possible height you can make for a lockdown is going to be six foot five the height combined with the wingspan unlocks 72 block rating which gives you silver chase down artist bronze rim protector which is pretty much all you're going to need to be really efficient in terms of guarding those pgs and obviously with the speed and perimeter defense that we already have like we mentioned it's going to allow you to play that lockdown defense on the perimeter but then if that guard ends up going into that paint on you and you're in that iso situation you still have the ability to get chase down blocks as well and a lot of those guards have really really bad driving dunk rating and even if they do you still have the ability to go for that chase down block but they don't have the good dunk rating in most situations 
situations. So if they end up in that situation where they feel like you're up way too high on them and you have a really easy drive take, then you still go for that chase down block and you are able to do so as well. So again, we're gonna get into all the attribute ratings and defensive badges and stuff like that that you wanna achieve, maybe some badge budgeting and stuff like that as well. But before we do that, I wanna talk about a couple of different lockdown heights as well. So like we said, if you go down on the height, it's gonna cost you, you have to go up in the weight to actually still get the perimeter defense, which also in turn makes you slower. Now, if you wanted to go like with a six foot or like maybe 5'10 guard, obviously you could go all the way down in the weight and still achieve 98 speed. But as you can see, the perimeter defense literally only unlocks silver clamps and 83 perimeter D. So it's not very good in your LT defense. And then on the other side of things right here, you're gonna see we're gonna go to the six foot six and you're gonna see the complete drop off in speed right there. From a six foot five to a six foot six, you lose five speed for going up one height. And then even worse, when you go from six foot six to six foot seven, you also lose six more. Now from six foot seven to six foot eight, you're only gonna lose two speed right here. As you can see, you go from 82 to 80. Either way, I do feel like six foot five is by far the best perimeter lockdown height in the game. If you want elite versatility though, in terms of being able to rebound with bigs and actually still be able to defend them on chase down blocks, just block attempts in general. I will say though, from six foot seven to six foot eight, you can't get a good enough interior defense to actually get a great contest on those seven foot three bigs with really high close shot. All types of different badges from mouse in the house to grace under pressure to post riser hall of fame, 99 standing dunk, 99 close shot. The list goes on and on. You're not gonna get great interior defense contests, but you still can play for really good blocks as well and still go for the chase down blocks playing hedge defense if you're playing on the big man spot or again, if you're planning to play on the on-ball lockdown defender, you can still achieve really good defensive ratings in terms of perimeter defense. As you can see, this one right here at six foot seven still has 95 perimeter D, 96 steel, while still having 82 speed. You could up the weight just a little bit to get 91 defensive rebound, which is gonna give you the gold rebound chaser unlocked. And the list goes on and on. There's all different types of versatility heights you can make for this lockdown spot. I do think though, your sweet spot definitely ranges between six foot five and six foot eight. Next up, I wanna talk about badge budgeting. So you're gonna see we have 96 perimeter defense and 97 steel on this build right here, but I do wanna explain why you maybe wanna tick those up one. So so in this situation, you can see Clamps is unlocked on Hall of Fame at 94 perimeter defense and Menace is unlocked at Hall of Fame at 95 perimeter defense. Now, you can see the cost of Menace and Clamps changes from six to five as well as Hall of Fame Tyler's Defender, but I don't think that's really a super big necessity. But anyway, the cost of those two badges changes from six to five by going from 96 perimeter defense to 97. So not only are you saving yourself the badge point that you're actually gaining right here for going from 96 to 97, you can see you go from 27 defensive badges to 28, but on top of that too, you're making it so Menace and Clamps Clamps only cost you five instead of six. So realistically, this one attribute point right here, going from 96 to 97, actually gains you three badges, literally one attribute rating. And then on top of that too, we have pickpocket right here with 97 steel. So if you go from 97 to 98 steel, you're gonna be able to make your pickpocket only cost five instead of six, as well as it impacts the gold level too. So if you are someone who only wants gold pickpocket, even if you have really good steel rating, having 98 makes it cost three instead of four. So this is where we're talking about badge budgeting, all types of stuff like this. I feel like this is the level that you would like to achieve if you were trying to go for a pure lockdown aspect right here. But realistically, not a lot of people like builds like this where you have really low ball handling speed. This build, however, does still get the ability to have bronze unpluckable and bronze quick first step. Again, this is a true role player right here. You're gonna be playing as a specific lockdown in this game if you have a build like this. But if you wanted to, you really could go with like 94, 95 premier defense. You could just go with 96 for the Hall of Fame pickpocket and call it a day. Or even if you don't believe in pickpocket that much, you could just go to 90 just to achieve Hall of Fame interceptor. So all of that, obviously you can see the budgeting goes crazy. I mean, if we have 98 steel rating and 97 printer defense or 98, realistically it's costing us like three or four attribute ratings, maybe even five sometimes. Obviously that's a trade off of its own. You can either be a pure lockdown and have the elite defensive ability and have even more defensive badge points to be used, or you can be more versatile and have a good ball handling build, have one that has good speed with ball, maybe more than 65 driving dunk if you want anything more than that. Me personally though, quick drops off one comes from 65, so that's all we really need in my opinion. So now here's where we wanna talk about badge budgeting a little bit. So this game is very different from any 2K that we've ever played, where in every other 2K, every level of a badge only costs one extra point to put on. So Hall of Fame always costs four, gold always costs three, silver always costs two, and bronze always costs one. In this situation where you have one that actually requires a super high attribute rating, you can see that this right here, defensive leader costs seven to put on Hall of Fame. Box costs six. We have a lot of other badges like pick dodger that costs five. And then every other Hall of Fame badge point is always gonna cost at the very minimum five. I've never seen a Hall of Fame badge in this game that only costs four to put on. So Hall of Fame badges are very expensive. So I would only value the Hall of Fame level on a certain badge that is very dependent on that. So for instance, ankle braces. 
I do think it's a really good badge. If you can afford it on Hall of Fame, that's a whole different story. But for this build right here that only has 29 defensive badges, I definitely would advocate for going probably something like gold, where you can see the cost of it. Literally, it goes from one to two to three, and then boom, it's gonna cost five just like that. And there's a lot of other badges that we need to touch up on for this build. So now we dropped a little bit of a layout right here for this build that has 29 defensive badges. And I wanna explain a couple different flexes you can make to this. So me personally, I don't feel like 29 defensive badges is enough to play elite on ball defense in this game. And as you can see, we're even skipping out on certain things like Hustler, and that's a no go. So we want this on at least silver, I would say, maybe even gold. And there are a couple situations where if you're someone who's playing a specific role and you're not really planning to switch on to bigs too often, you probably don't even need rebound chaser or box. It kind of takes away from what this build actually has for its value though. But either way, you could probably just pop that on this hustler just like that. Now here's the thing, right? We have a lot of other really good defensive badges that we don't even have at the Hall of Fame level. So for instance, we don't have interceptor at Hall of Fame. We don't have clamps at Hall of Fame. I definitely think with a build like this, you want to add more defensive badges to it. You definitely want to go to college or any of the level 39 badge points that you get with this stuff. And and then just like that, you can be able to pop on clamps, interceptor as well. And then you can keep all these badges at the level they're at. I don't think Menace is really one that requires the Hall of Fame level. I think ankle braces would be nice, but it's really expensive too. Pickpocket's starting to become something that I don't even think you should run on Hall of Fame either, because again, it's gonna cost five points to put it on instead of the three that it would only cost for gold. I really think Tireless Defender and Ball Stripper on bronze is a really good value. I don't think you should ever leave those two badges alone. And I think bronze Tireless Defender is just fire. And then again, for certain things like Intimidator and Chase Down Artist or Rim Protector, we want those on the highest level we can get them, even if you're just on an on-ball lockdown build. Gold Pick Dodger should be fine. I really don't think you need the Hall of Fame level, to be honest with you. But anyway, that's just a little bit of a run through on badge budgeting. If you guys have a completely different build than this, I'm sure it's a little bit different for you, as well as if you have different ratings, some of these badge points actually cost a lot more for you. So for instance, like what we were talking about, where if you don't have the super high perimeter defense level, you're not gonna get clamps and menace at the easiest badge budget that you can get for the Hall of Fame level. Or again, maybe even gold for you cost four instead of three. Again, for Pick Dodger, we were talking about 98 steel rating, unless gold at the three point level and then hall of fame for only five whereas if you had it at 97 steel then it's going to cost four for gold and six for hall of fame so again just a little run through on the build creator and then badge budgeting on top of that too that i wanted to just touch on for you guys but anyway that is pretty much off the video i hope you enjoyed if you did for drop a like sub if you're new turn on the noties all good stuff and like always tries one to one thousand likes again this is a really beloved series on the channel and it does so so well so if you guys can show some love to it help me out with the algorithm and stuff like that if you're early to this video or if you're watching it because it blew up and you want to also drop a like and you appreciate any of the feedback or help that you got on this video i'd really appreciate that as well if you made it to the end of the video Put D in the comments to show your support to me all the way through, or put lockdown in the comments to show your support to me all the way through. Other than that, I hope y'all enjoyed, and take it easy, man. Peace.